Good morning and welcome. Welcome to another cookery show. You asked me for cookery videos and I'm serving them to you. <clears throat> yeah, I'm enjoying them as well. And this one is no exception because, as the title suggests, it is an experiment. I'm taking you on a journey. Come with me. Join me. This video was going to be part of the series Cheap, Tasty and Filling, but because it is an experiment, I decided to publish it as a standalone video and talk a little bit about that. Experimenting in the kitchen, having a go at things you've never tried, making up your own recipe based on research. I've done probably a little bit too much sitting down and reading earlier on today and internet trawling to try and come up with a recipe um, for a savoury snack. I sort of fancied the idea of a savoury flapjack and yes there are a few to be found on the internet. There are various websites um, that have done recipes but many of them are using ingredients that I don't have or they're using a lot of cheese, you're having to cook parts of the recipe before putting together the whole mix. I don't want to do that. I want to prepare and bake. That's all I want to do. I want it to be quick and easy to do because that's what a flapjack is. It's a pretty easy recipe to make. But I don't want to be melting anything or cooking butter. I also don't want to be adding any extra fats I really want the good fats to be coming from seeds and perhaps nuts, but I'm not using nuts today. And I kind of also wanted it to be as vegan as possible, although I'm erring on the side of caution today in terms of using things to bind. I think I'm going to be using an egg, but I don't think it's totally necessary. So I wanted to come up with a savoury snack something akin to falafel, something that could be eaten as a hot or cold snack, used with a salad, maybe put into a wrap for lunch, um, something a bit versatile but tasty and easy to make. I also had certain ingredients that I wanted to use up. I've got some pinhead oats. Now I've never cooked with pinhead oats they are the oat that has been cut up rather than rolled. And it's quite fine, but this one is described as coarse. And it's quite soft, so I thought that's going to cook okay. Um, I've got loads of pumpkin seeds, loads of sunflower seeds as well, and quite a number of carrots. So it had to be a sort of carrot and seed basis. I also haven't got any onions left, so I've, I've got no onions to put in. So I've got to make it tasty, so I'm adding a few herbs to it. I've sort of thought about the recipe, written it down, estimated some of the ingredient amounts, and that's where doing your research really comes in, because you do need a bit of a guide. Although this is not making a cake, and it's not making pastry, so I guess things don't need to be exact. I think the recipe I've written, based on my research, is going to work, I think. That's also based on my experience of making things like um, not roasts, or at least Paul making it, and seeing how a mixture can come together. And of course, you've always got the lovely fallback of using a little bit of flour and a little bit of liquid, but I don't want to be adding that to this mix. So, I just wanted to talk about the idea of experimenting and how you can do something if you research and take your time. I did get to the point where I was getting a little bit exasperated at not being able to find a recipe using binhead oats. And I thought, why am I getting so hung up about this? Just estimate based on other flapjack type recipes. Estimate. If it goes wrong, it goes wrong. It can be chopped up and put into a bolognese sauce for a vegetarian 
spaghetti dish. You know, it's not going to go to waste. Let's get in the kitchen and have a look what I'm doing. Okay, let me just stress before we go on, this is an experiment. So I've got a, a baking tray, which I've lined with parchment. There's about, I think there's probably about 450 grams of grated carrots. I've got these which are pinhead oats, which is what we've got in. We've got a packet of them. Goodness knows why, I've never used them before. They're sort of fine oats, sort of cut up oats, I think they are. 150 grams of that. I've got some Engevita yeast flakes, which are excellent for imparting a savoury flavour to a dish. I've got about 100 grams of ground sunflower. I've got 100 gram sunflower seeds, sorry. 100 grams of ground pumpkin seeds. An egg, which is optional. You could use water and flour, I guess, as a binder. And I've also got uh, heaped teaspoon of Swiss bouillon powder, a good teaspoon of ground black pepper, a good pinch of ground nutmeg, and some mixed herbs. We need to combine all of this. So let's get the mixing bowl out and get everything in there and get it combined. So I've got this old Denby bowl, which is really essentially a salad bowl, but it's the Denby Baroque range, which we've had for many, many years. Um, and I'm going to be using this as my mixing bowl today, mainly because it's large. I'm going to put my dry ingredients in first. So that's the pumpkin seeds and the sunflower seeds all ground up. The pinhead oats. Spices and herbs and bouillon powder. Before the carrot goes in, I'm just going to give that a quick stir. I'm going to add my yeast flakes next. I think a heaped tablespoon of yeast flakes. Stir those in. This is the moment where I hope that there is enough seasoning in there. Because obviously once the pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds heat up in the warmth of the oven, they will also give off their oils and therefore their flavours. I'm going to add my carrot. Look at that colour. Wow. It's almost fluorescent, isn't it? I'm also hoping that this mixture amount is okay for the baking sheet, for the baking tray. I have no idea whether it's going to fit or not. I'm going to combine these first. Before I put the beaten egg in there. It's quite strange, they're combining quite, quite easily. And of course the, mm, just got a waft of a gorgeous smell then. Of course, the carrot's going to have moisture as well, which will be released during the cooking. It actually looks like quite a nice base for some kind of stuffing. And I know I'm calling it a flapjack. The only reason I'm calling it a flapjack is because I'm using oats. That's, that's literally the only reason I'm calling it that. I mean, it could be a bake. It's I, I suppose it's like a carrot and seed roast. Mm. Keep getting wafts of the bouillon powder, which is starting to give up its scent, which is rather delicious. Okay, mm, that's, that's quite good, actually, moisture-wise, with the carrot. Okay, let's get the beaten egg in there. I'm going to put half of it in first and try and incorporate that. I don't know whether you can see, but I'm loving the orange against the blue, the dark blue of the bowl. Just a 
case of stirring it and stirring it and stirring it. It's hard to tell whether it's evenly incorporated or not, but just keep on going. And I guess what I'm looking for is a mixture that looks as though it's going to bake together well. And I'm also sort of thinking, do I add a splash of water? One way to check, a bit like dough, is to check when you press it, what happens? Does it look as though it's holding together and going to bake? I think that's gonna be okay. My instinct is telling me my cookery instinct is telling me. That, that will be enough. I certainly know from cooking flapjacks that once it's cooked, you have to leave it in the pan. So I think let's transfer this into the baking pan and just go for it. I'm just gonna go for it. So I'm gonna to have to be careful because I've not sort of glued this down with butter or anything like that. So I'm going to put a small amount on here and distribute it so it holds this down before I start spreading it and pressing it down. hoping I've got enough mixture. Again, I'm doing this back to front, so apologies if I cross over with my hand. Certainly feels like a flapjack mixture. I'm just going to gently press it, well, quite firmly press it actually, once it's distributed. Whenever I think, oh, it's just too dry, I remind myself that the carrot is going to be giving out moisture. The seeds are going to be giving off oils. So the cooking process hopefully will make everything okay. It's always a bit nerve wracking when you try something completely new that you've never done before. That's sort of well pressed down now. I'm going to use my lovely new tablespoon just to really push it. Okay, I'm going to cook this in the oven naturally. And I'm going to cook it, I think for about 25 minutes. And I think I'm going to have the oven on, I think about 170 fan, not too high, just to give it time to really cook through. So let's do that now. And shortly we'll see what it looks like after the bake and whether we can indeed get it out of the baking tray. Okay, it's out of the oven and feels quite baked. What I'm going to do is let it cool down in the tin before I even attempt to remove. But what I'm going to do is just cut what 
while it's hot. It feels as though it's baked quite well. I'm just gently going around the edge. Okay, I'm going to let that cool and then we will attempt to get them out and see what they taste like. Oh, I did that a bit wobbly, a bit wonky. Oh, well, doesn't matter. They look nice and they look as though they might be quite nice with a little tomato sauce, maybe some rice, even maybe with a salad, cold. Let's wait and see. Let's let them cool. Okay, so it's cooled down now and I'm going to attempt to get a piece out. Well, it stayed intact. Let's see what the texture is like. Well, it kind of looks like a flapjack, doesn't it? It's quite crisp on the top. Quite good, quite a good experiment. Let me try some. It might taste awful. You see, it's staying together. Mmm. Mmm. Quite nice, actually. It's not bad. So, it's lunchtime. Lunchtime, it's Sunday lunch. We're having wraps. Mm. So these are tortilla wraps. Two each, because we want a nice hearty lunch. So we'll have a light supper later. I've heated the veggie flapjacks cut them into smaller squares, heated them for a couple of minutes in the microwave on a medium heat, they are quite hot. I got some lettuce, some chopped pepper, a little bit of Greek yogurt, and a little bit of cheddar cheese. And we're just gonna make our wraps. <laughs> Paul, have a wrap. I can take both. Why? Because it takes so long for you to get them to me. Oh, lovely. So, Lettuce, piece of lettuce, some peppers. Oh, whoops. Some vegetable. I'm using my fingers. I'm using your fork. spoons for the yogurt. I know, they're put so far away from me. A little bit of cheese. For extra calcium and protein. And some Greek yogurt for the same thing. For some moisture as well. Moisture. Moisture. Such a good word. Wrap it up as roughly as you can. Any which way. I mean, it's just a sandwich at the end of the day, isn't it, really? And eat and enjoy. Mm. They do work really well like this. And we had them again earlier as a snack, and they were lovely. Mmm. Works well. They do. You need a bit of moisture. You need a dressing on them. Like you would with um, falafel, you use hummus. Mm. Mm. They are really good. They are. Mm. How quick were they to make? Very quick. Just preparing. 
the ingredients, that was it. Mm. They work really well for lunch. So there you go. Mm. An experimental cookery session. It's edible. It's tasty. Well, it's not edible. It's lovely. Well, it is edible, but it's also lovely. Mm. I think that's a, a lunch rotor thing. Because sometimes our lunches get a bit samey. Mm. And I think if that's quick, it's something that I could do in the morning while you're at work. And we have a different lunch. Mm. And then a light supper. Yeah. Yum. There we are. Very good. Thanks for watching. Mmm.